Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos on partial differential equations. And in particular, this presentation deals with a so-called inhomogeneous version of the wave equation. And um, I'll show you how uh, an idea called Duhamel's principle leads to a solution to this problem. Okay, now a couple of things to note before we start. C is just a constant. Here we've got zero initial displacement and or initial position and zero initial velocity. And H is the, the inhomogeneous or non-homogeneous term. So H is, is um, sometimes called a source term and it's inputting um, a movement or vibrations or displacement into our system. So in previous videos we've looked at the case when h is zero and these conditions are non-zero and we formed uh, a solution known as um, d'Alembert's solution. Now if I cover up the h and I have zero conditions here and here the only solution to this problem is zero but if I have this um, h source term then actually the, the string will vibrate even though these conditions are zero. Okay. So this is more complicated than the um, homogeneous case where, when h is zero. And the idea that I'm going to talk about is known as Duhamel's principle. Okay, all right. So we're going to solve a following problem that is related to nine and 10. Okay, so let's just compare these two problems and see how, they're, how, they're, how they relate and how they differ. Okay, firstly, you can see 11 is a homogeneous wave equation in one spatial dimension. Okay, this condition is the same. This, the uh, initial velocity has changed. So the h has sort of come from up here and gone down here. Okay, now also note that the initial um, starting point for this problem is actually at this parameter uh, t equals s, where s is the parameter. Okay. Um, so so that, that differs a little bit from, from 9 and 10 because we're not starting at 0. Okay, so the solution to this problem 11, 12 is going to be denoted by V of x, comma t, um, semicolon s. Okay, so how does that help us solve this problem? Well, we could solve this problem using um, d'Alembert's formula because this is a homogeneous wave equation now and, I, and I've got some... Um, initial conditions, but the only thing that's stopping us really is this t greater than s. So what we're actually going to do is put this back into a standard form, okay? All right, so the previous problem has initial conditions prescribed at t equals s rather than at t equals zero. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to shift the problem so that we get back to the standard wave equation type format. Okay, so here's our standard form, and you can see I've basically just um, shifted everything. And the solution to this shifted problem is going to be denoted by W. Okay, and what's the relationship between W and V? Well, here it is here. Okay, you can see the shift occurring in the second variable. Okay, now this is a standard problem now that we know how to solve it, that I've treated in, in previous videos. Okay, this is a standard homogeneous wave equation. Here the initial displacement or initial position is zero and here just, just essentially think of this as, as h of x with respect to the, the previous videos. Um, this is the initial velocity. Okay, so we know that the solution to this problem is this form. Usually you would have you know, uh, the, the initial um, position in here, but we have zero initial uh, position, so there's, there's no extra terms in this, in this uh, uh, solution. Okay, so this is W of x comma t uh, semicolon s. To get v, I'm just going to basically replace t in here with 
t minus s in brackets. Okay? So he's shifting. So this then is the solution to this problem. Okay? So it's still not quite clear how that actually helps us though. Well, how does it help us? I'm glad you asked. Let's have a look at Duhamel's principle. Duhamel's principle basically says the following. If V solves this problem, we know how to calculate the solution to that problem now, then the unique solution to the inhomogeneous problem that we started with is given by the integral of v, where we integrate from 0 to t. Okay. Now, if I, if I write this out in terms of w, and then, you know, essentially, you know, this is my, this over 2c is my w here, then this is the explicit formula for the solution to the inhomogeneous wave equation with zero initial conditions. Okay, so I'm going to show you that this really does solve our original problem 9 and 10. Okay, now in another video, I'll start with this and I'll actually show you how to come up with this solution. But essentially in this video, I'm just going to take this and, and verify that it really does solve this problem. Okay, all right, so let's prove it. We are going to essentially show that the initial conditions are satisfied and the uh, PDE 9 holds. Okay, now I'm just going to work with this form here. You could work with this form here, but this is sim the simplest form, so that's, that's good enough for me. Okay, so let's check the initial position. Okay, you want it to be zero. So if I go up here and I plug in t equals zero, obviously this whole thing can be zero, it is zero. So, nine holds. Now to check 10 holds, I need to compute the derivative of this with respect to t and substitute in t equals zero. So, to do that, I'm going to apply Leibniz rule for differentiating under an integral sign. Okay, so uh, what is that? Let me just remind you about Leibniz rule. So if I want to take the derivative of an integral, which where these may be functions of t, let's say I've got a function of x, t, say, and s, it's just the following. Now, this can be proved by using the chain rule and the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, if alpha and beta are constants, then these things are zero. Okay, and the last step is just to push this inside the actual integral sign. Okay, so you push that in, it'll go to a partial derivative of f. Okay, so that is Leibniz rule right there in a nutshell. It's a bit messy, but it's very useful for the study of partial differential equations. Okay, so let's differentiate this with respect to t. So in this case, my beta would be just t and my alpha would be the zero function. So this term is going to be, derivative of t is just 1. So 1 times this evaluated at s equals t, so that's where that comes from, plus the partial derivative moved inside the integral sign. Now, this, if we look back, this and this, is just zero, okay? So when these two things are the same, we just get zero. Okay, so this disappears and I get that. Now if I plug in t equals zero, again, I'm gonna have a zero and a zero in my integral sign, so this definitely holds. Okay, so both of our initial conditions hold there. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is actually prove that this form really does satisfy the uh, inhomogeneous wave equation. So I need to compute another derivative. 
<coughs> so take the partial derivative of both sides with respect to t and apply a Leibniz rule again and you'll get a very similar setup as the previous um, page. Now this is just the following with s replaced by t. Okay, so I get that plus this. Now, from here to here, I've invoked 11. Okay, because v is a solution to 11, 12. Okay, so from there to there. And the last thing is, is that um, this can be moved, because we're not differentiating with respect to t here, this double derivative can be moved outside the integral sign. Okay, so like the Leibniz rule in reverse, if you like. Okay, can be moved outside the integral sign, and what's left is c squared d squared dx squared of the integral of v. Now, the integral of v is just u. So this breaks down to this. Okay, so what do we have here? We have our PDE9. Okay, so We've shown that this form of solution satisfies all the all the associated equations with our inhomogeneous wave equation. Now, in another video, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to essentially start with this and come up with this. Okay, so here we're going one way. In, in the next video, I'm going to go the other way. Okay. So I hope um, this has given you some insight into how to solve and um, verifying solutions to the inhomogeneous wave equation. And I hope you can join me for more presentations in the future.